50s from James Treadwell, Joe Denley and Fabian Cowdery batted Kent into a position of strength on the penultimate day of the LV County Championship match against Glamorgan in Canterbury. With all of their second innings wickets intact, Kent led by 77 at the start of day three, but with 10 runs on the board and that advantage stretched to 86, they lost Daniel Bell Drummond in the third over as he gave Michael Hogan his sixth wicket of the match. Treadwell had found himself at the top of the order, having come out as a night watchman on the previous evening to survive the one over Kent had to deal with. This was now an opportunity for the England spinner to show what he was capable of with a bat in his hands. At the other end now is Joe Denley, a man who has started to show some consistency with the bat this year. He'd already struck a couple of fifties this summer and was on his way to a third one after getting his innings moving with these boundaries. He also hit Dean Koska down the ground for a six as he dominated the early scoring, Kent looking to get as far ahead of their opponents as possible. Denley's latest half century arrived off 79 balls with this single off Koska. The former Middlesex man had struck one six and nine fours and was helping his side get well ahead of their visitors, the lead now closing in on 200. His partnership with Treadwell, who batted throughout the morning, went on to make 114 runs for the second wicket, Denley scoring 66 of those before he was fooled by an in-swinger from Graham Wagg, who now had the 350th wicket of his first-class career. With Treadwell continuing to block out one end, Brendan Nash was able to play some shots when he came to the crease, and that's just what he did, as he was soon putting back to ball on a pitch which had remained a good one and had become noticeably paler on each day. It had flattened out since day one when batting was not as easy as it had become now for those with the right application. Such as Treadwell. Earlier in his career he was not a bad bat at all but as his spinning career has developed so his batting has suffered. This may have been the 16th first class 50 of his career but it was his first in this competition for his county since May 2012. It had occupied 124 balls from which he'd struck six fours. He did hit a 50 for Sussex though on loan last year. Having got there he now wanted to push on and perish when he drove Hogan to Chris Cook to go for 53 at 175 for three, the lead standing at 251. Sam Northeast came and went in the same Hogan over, playing over the top of a full length delivery to have his leg stump knocked back. Quicker runs were by now the order of the day for Kent and Cowdery helped the cause by getting off the mark with this maximum off Koska. But before T, Kent had also lost Nash for 45 to his shot, which showed what the home side's intent was going to be from here. With four sessions of the match to go, Kent had got to 228 for five for a lead of 304, and they needed a few more before Northeast could consider a declaration. They would have liked Darren Stevens to stay in longer, but he was strangled down the leg side by Wag on 10. Cowdery, in just his eighth first-class match, made his second 50 at this level, this being his first though for his county. It had come off 63 balls with seven fours and a six. It also taken his side to their 250. The home team now hoping to bat their opponents out of this game completely. In order to do that, Sam Billings was given license to play some shots, and that he certainly did. Adding 48 with Cowdery in seven overs before the latter was out, for 54, swinging a short ball from David Lloyd to James Kettleborough on the boundary's edge. Billings warmed up for the forthcoming 2020 tournament with an array of funky shots, until a more conventional one brought about his downfall as he clipped Koska to Hogan at mid-wicket after making a runner ball 37. Koska also did for Matt Coles, another out to a shot of aggression, by now, Kent had 309 runs on the board and needed their last pair to take their lead beyond 400. That they did before Hogan made it nine wickets in this match as Callum Haggett had a swing and a miss. Kent were all out for 327. That left Glamorgan a target of 404 in a minimum of 107 overs. In the seventh of them, they lost their inspirational skipper Jacques Rudolph, who was bowled by Coles on 14. Kent were then convinced that Coles had also trapped Kettleborough in front, the decision though going with the batsman. So he survived and will start again on the final morning on 14. His side have 32 runs on the board and now need a further 372 to win. 
It is Kent, therefore, who will be the favourites to break their duck this season.